Okay, boys and girls, welcome back. Red Mist in the house once again. How you doing? I hope everyone's doing great. I'm doing great. And we, my friends, are going to be playing some F1 Manager. Now, I want to go ahead and I'm kind of torn in what to do in this video. So, if I'm basically going to record this and immediately upload this. Oh, nice. Some sync stars. There we go, baby. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be basically immediately uploading this. Um, so put down in the comments if you would like to see me possibly do a couple of videos on my qualifying in the Grand Prix. Um, I haven't played any of the races yet. It looks as if this is going to be quite a tough Grand Prix for me. First place, 150 uh, points. That's a, basically an almost perfect score. So you can see here, pretty pretty da damn good scoring system on this man right here. Now, I, don't, I reckon I'm probably actually going to come around about somewhere between 20 and 30 is the usual for my car right now. Um, sometimes I do get a little bit more, but if that's something that you want to see, then tell me in the comments down below. But for this video, I'm first off, I'm going to go and upgrade that sync star because this is going to be a very nice little adjustment to my car even though it's only going to give me one speed or aerodynamic and a little bit of extra pit time that's still going to be a very very nice little adjustment to my car so as you can see here my pit time now guys is under four seconds with this car set up now this is actually quite nice. Um, I could change the WTWT out, um, but I was racing in Series 6, um, so therefore I do prefer to have that little bit more um, grip when it comes to Series 6, but I could go put this bad boy back in and get a bit more reliability, a little bit more pit time, but I will, uh, sorry, a little bit more power, but I will lose that four grip now it might but some might say well power is better than grip but in series six grip is better trust me now what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna go ahead and i've been seeing in the comments a few people have been asking about how to win races in series five and how to win races in series six um so i'm gonna give you kind of a little bit of a how what i like to do in these areas so for series five you're gonna want to have a little bit more power and a little bit more uh, speed and grip on your car so for this particular time or for the these particular tracks i'm actually going to swap the twt back out and i'm going to go put this bad boy which is the best part of it, in these pieces i'm going to go put this bad boy back on the car now this is pretty much the setup that I would normally like to run in Series 5. Um, depending on what your freewheeler is, um, you might want to go and put the Zen back into your car because basically when it comes to um, the engines, you're going to want to use the freewheeler, the Zen, or if you have the block leveled up, the block is the best engine to put into your car. Um, but predominantly, you're going to be using either the Zen or the Freewheeler. Um, the Zen has more power. Um, I believe it has more power and grip. They both have the same aerodynamics once they're both fully leveled up. Um, but the, um, the Freewheeler does have better pit time and better reliability. So do, do bear that in mind. If you want pit time, go for the Freewheeler. If you want power and speed or power and grip go for the zen um if you're not too bothered about the grip time but in my opinion i'm bothered about the pit time um so this is what i run now the reason why i run this setup in series five is because predominantly you're gonna be running a two pit stop race unless you hit brazil if you hit brazil then you're going to be comfortably on a one pit stop other than that you're going to be doing or actually do you is it russia yeah no i think it's only russia actually it's only russia so ignore what i'm saying russia is actually the only one that you're going to be doing a one uh, uh, two stop on but either way 
um, having a nice pit time is always nice. So you guys might actually find this a little bit different because I've actually found something with the matchmaking system that if you don't overgrind flags and you have lower level flags, you will actually the the matchmaking system actually seems to put yourself at the same level of um, flags as somebody else as your your top flags, I should say. So if you farmed out like fourteen thousand uh, one thousand four hundred flags. Um, that's pretty much who you're going to play, even if you drop your flags down. So do bear that in mind. Try not to increase your flags too much um, before your car is ready to do that. So we've actually got a wet race here, which does play in my favor a little bit. I'm using uh, Kafia and Antonio again, because these are the two races that I like the most. Um, they seem to be very, very good for doing pretty much everything in this game. Um, so these are two very, very powerful dri or uh, good drivers to invest your money in if you are kind of unsure in what to level up because they both have very good overtaking capability um Kafia has very good defensive take ability oh, uh, defensive capabilities they both have very good tire management and they both have fairly good uh, fuel management um and i will be honest Kafia is good in the rain, but Antonio's not really that great in the rain until level 10, but he is still very, very good in the rain. I think at the moment my Antonio has about 50% good uh, wet weather ability. Um, so really the only thing that the two of them lack is consistency. Um, but that's not a huge issue because when you when your car, the only time that consistency is a really big problem is your qualifying lap. And then if your car is kind of under leveled for the area that you're trying to race in. So if you've got a car that's like kind of like, I don't know, your parts are sort of like level six, maybe level sevens, and you're trying to race in like, say, series six you're going to have a hard time because your car's not going to be very good to race in Series 6. So you might want to go for those drivers that have a little bit better consistency because then they'll qualify better in the qualifying lap, which will make your actual lap a little bit easier, even though you have a bad car, if that makes sense. So there's a few little things that you can do to like play around with little things and stuff. Um... But as you can see here, we're actually comfortably, well, I was going to say comfortably in the lead. We're not comfortably in the lead, but we are running quite nice. Now, I purposely haven't pitted here because I wanted to see what the rain was doing. How long is that rain? Another minute and a half. Okay, so that means that we're actually going to get another three laps um, I would say another three laps of uh, wet uh, wet tires, which will make it beneficial to actually put um, another set of... Oh my god, why do I keep going into that? It'll make it beneficial to actually put another set of wet tires onto my car. So I'm going to turbo on this lap, but then I'm actually going to reduce down my time here. Uh, or not reduce down my time, but reduce down my... Um, my speed i just wanted to make sure that i could get into that pit well ahead of my other car and also ahead of my opponent and then i'm going to slow it down just for a minute not too long because obviously i want to save enough um fuel to actually i've got more than enough fuel screw it let's just go guys um now this is obviously where fuel management comes into effect because obviously the better fuel management you have the better it will be for um for racing like obviously if you've got someone like uh bottas um vettel lewis hamilton you know they've got great fuel man well actually i think lewis hamilton's got bad fuel management or is his tire management it's one or the other but if you've got somebody with really good fuel management then obviously having um the turbo is going to help you win a lot of races um so 
don't worry too much about your qualifying lap um, because you haven't got to like you don't need to panic about your qualifying lap too much. Um, is it going to be worth I'm kind of. Should I slow him down or should I just keep going and pit him? It kind of looks like my uh, my rival is going slow so that he can uh, not pit. I'm thinking I'm just going to continue to go fast. And uh, I want to take a risk. Guys, I want to take a risk. This No, it's not worth taking a risk. It's not worth it. It might be worth taking the risk on Antonio, though. Because I think that the track is still going to be too wet for... Kafiat to actually make the soft tires work um but as you can see here look at the difference in how far um my Antonio has got in front of his Grosjean because of the fact that I've continued to turbo but he's had to slow his guys down um I'm gonna take the risk here because it's only 44% wet track. I'm gonna take the risk and switch onto some wet tire onto some dry tires. My rival has actually had the same idea. Um, so we're gonna see. Like, look at this, guys. Like the wet tires as well. Like I was telling you in when I done the wet tire race. Sometimes having the soft tires, you can actually benefit from. Um, putting the wet, uh, the dry tires or the soft tires onto the track, um, so or onto your car. Why do I want to? Uh, I can't even think uh, or speak. So it's not onto the track. It's onto your car. Um, so you can see here we done quite nice. We finished in first. We finished in sixth or ninth, and that was under a predominantly wet race. Um, so that was quite nice. Adds on to kind of how you can judge whether or not what you want to do with wet races adds on to that wet race video that I done was it two days ago I think it was two days ago so you could kind of get a little bit of an understanding on that but then what I would suggest you do is you kind of got to pay attention to your uh to your uh driver's abilities so i would say that when you're looking at your your drivers if you're in series six uh, or series five or series six you're gonna want to predominantly go for tire management and fuel management because there is a few few races that you can do one-stop races um, and you can see here that Kafiat's stats and antonio's stats at level nine are pretty damn strong for two races that you get in series two and series three um you could obviously go and change out um grosjean you know obviously grosjean's really good as well a uh, little bit more fuel management and tire management and stuff so that would be a really nice thing to have um but one thing that i do find is grosjean's consistency even though he is fairly consistent the same as um Kafiat at 41 whereas um Kafiat is 42 i find that grosjean actually doesn't qualify as good a lot more often than what um Kafiat does and that's why I normally like to opt for Kafiat. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to race in um, Series 6 now. But for racing in Series 6, like I said before, I would normally replace out to the T, uh, TWTW because it has that little bit more grip. Yeah, you're going to sacrifice that power, but you're going to gain that little bit more grip. And Series 6 is kind of very heavily focus towards grip now if you look at the maps australia is a very slow map singapore is a is it singapore is it sorry it's japan isn't it japan again is a very slow predominantly focused on grip track and then china is a little bit more speed focused so you don't want to lose too much power you don't want to lose too much uh aerodynamics to gain extra grip or extra pit time but if you can get a nice balance between the all of them that's quite nice for series six 
looks. And you can see here, 83 power, 70 aerodynamic, 60 grip, 51 uh, reliability with a just under 4 second pit time. That is a very nice balance. Um in my opinion, because you've still got the speed to race quite nice on the J uh, Japan straight and China's uh, two straights, and then you've still got a nice grip to focus on Australia and uh, Japan's uh, windy part of the track. So it's quite nice, in my opinion, to be running a, a bit of a more even uh, car setup when it comes to speed power and grip for series six and hopefully i'm gonna show you why and i'm not gonna lose but hey sometimes you do lose but as you can see like i was telling you before because of the flags that i have grinded out in the past i am playing somebody with more flags now that doesn't always mean that they are gonna have a better car but nine times out of ten, it does mean that they have a better car because they're obviously able to win at a higher level than you. Um, so you can see here, like I was saying before, we're in Australia right now. So it's a little bit slower, which means that it focuses a little bit more on the grip. But the good thing about this is that Australia is actually a one-stop track. Now, this is where having Grosjean would be a little bit better than uh, Daniel Kofiat because Grosjean does have that little bit more tyre management, but it's it's still doable. You can still do a one-stop on uh, Kofiat, but I normally do a double-stop on Kofiat just because it's a little bit more consistent um, than trying to do the one stop now one thing with australia is i will always do turbos on australia until we get to this corner here um just because the pack uh the pack or the grid is a little bit more bun bunched up and if you stop using your turbo um you will probably be overtaken um, so bear that in mind. I'm probably going to be overtaken still, even by doing the turbo to that point. Um, but it's still nice to keep your grid position just for a little bit and then maintain. Now, one thing that I will suggest in this race is don't worry, at, like don't worry at all about what your opponent is doing. Like, literally, don't even look at your your rival or your opponent. You don't want to worry about him using turbo and trying to get a better grid position than you. If he's trying to use turbos to overtake your, your driver, let him. Don't try to counter-race him, because this track is very um, punishing if you don't manage your tires and fuel nicely um so bear that in mind like even such as here you can see right now antonio was nearly overtaken by that car don't worry about it like don't try and speed your car up to get in front of him just let them overtake just keep your car on cruise because this is very very important of a track um to manage your tires especially if you've got antonio um because or sorry, if, especially if you're using Antonio Grosjean or um, Kofiat. Now, Grosjean at level 8 has a 95 uh, tire, ma tire management. Um, Kofiat at level 9 will have an 87 tire management. And Antonio at level 9 will actually be a 100 tire management. So the one that you need to worry the least amount is, An is Antonio. But because of... Oh, I'm talking too much, guys. We need to turbo now. Um, we're going to turbo around this corner. Now, this is the big thing. We're going to turbo around this corner. And we're going to keep the straight going with Antonio. Now, we're going to turbo Kofiat so that there's that little bit of a gap behind me. Now, I will show you where you should have been turboing from. Um, which is just around this corner. So, as you get to this red line there, like that red banner, that's where you actually want to hit your... Um, 
your turbo and you want to be turboing from there on out um now bearing in mind that my cars were a little bit closer together this is why having just under four second pit time is a very very crucial thing now you can see here i actually pitted in 3.4 seconds that's pretty damn huge of a pit time and i still backed up antoni uh Kafiat enough that that meant that my rival actually got in front of me so bear that in mind now we're going to slow antonio down here round these corners we're actually going to slow kafiat down round these corners as well because again it's very very important as you hit that green line you hit the speed you come round the corner as you hit that green banner you hit the speed again and now you're good to go until the end of the race now on Antonio, I should say. You're good to go on Antonio until the end of the race. Is, my, is this guy in front of me? He is, but he's going to have to pit. So bear that in mind. Now, Anto uh, Kafiat, you're going to have to manage his tires just a little bit more because obviously he is a little bit less on the old uh, tire management. So this time, instead of slowing him right down, we're actually just going to slow him down a little bit and then we're going to hit that turbo again. And you can see here that obviously Antonio's fine. Now Kafiat will be fine until the end of the race. But unfortunately, like I said before, my part, uh, my teammate or my rival has actually got that better car than me. So you can see here and look at how close this tire management is, guys. He's literally on 1% as he goes over the line. Kafiat is just about to drop off of his on as he goes over the line. So the tire management is super, super crucial. But as you can see in that match, I literally couldn't really have raced any better than I did. And I lost. And I lost because of the fact that my, the, my rival literally just has a better car than me. So sometimes, in my opinion, sometimes you just can't win a race. And the re how you fix that is by not doing what I've done. Now, very important. When I have gone through this race, and you can see here, look at the flags that I have on Series 6. Look at the flags that I have on Series 5. I have over-grinded my flags. Um, everything is maxed. Now, something that you need to... Uh, pay attention to is as soon as you unlock a level now i i don't know if this genuinely works um but i've been seeing a few people tell me that as soon as you unlock a level purposely go down to the level below and lose your flags before you start grinding the new flags because every single area has that little bit more flags so you can see here series 5 has 300 flags whereas series 6 has 500 flags so that means that you can get 200 more flags out of series 6 than you can out of series 5 so as soon as you've unlocked series 5 go back to series 6 and purposely lose races lose all 300 flags because once you've unlocked an area you can't un de unlock it it's always unlocked so by losing them flags you're not actually gonna go up in flags so if you keep your flags here at like just say you have i don't know pull it pull a number out of the hat so what's that 300 700 uh, 500 600 650 so you'd have like 670 flags when you completely max out series four so then when you go into series six you're probably gonna have to go up to 600 flags to get series uh six unlocked but then once series six is unlocked don't race in series six go back to series five or go back to series four and lose every single flag in this area because then that will give you like a two if you go back to series four because you can comfortably win in series five then 
lose the flags in Series 4. But if you can't comfortably win in Series 5, lose the flags in Series 5. Lose 300 flags in Series 5, and then you can get 300 flags in Series 6. You can then get your 200 flags to unlock Series 7. Now, I know this is a little bit more complicated, so I might actually make a video on this on a lower account. So tell me in the comments if you do want to see that. Um, but from what I can gather, this genuinely works. And then you'll be able to, eventually, you'll actually be able to race in Series 7 with or against those lower level people that don't have very high flags because you've actually got lower flags and it's kind of a way to trick the um the game's matchmaking system and you can do this on the lower levels as well you don't just have to do this on like the higher levels you can do this when it comes to like series two you can literally go and unlock like series three then go back to series two lose all 50 flags and then race in series three and you might you'll probably have a, an easier time racing in series three so do bear that in mind don't over level your flags but if that end bit was complicated do tell me in the comments down below and i'll try and explain it a little bit easier but on a lower level account so i can actually show you better what i'm talking about but that's it for me today guys i hope that this has spread a little bit of light even though i lost that race in series six i hope this has spread a little bit of light on how to help you race in series uh five and also series six and i will also do a video on um how to do series seven on this account a little bit later date i want to get more grip on this car before i start doing uh series seven races um but i do have a friend's account that is maxed so i could possibly go on to his account and show you series seven if you guys really really do need a breakdown on series seven um but the biggest thing I can suggest is just focus on grip. When it comes to Series 7, focus on power, focus on grip, and you're going to be golden. Um, but that's it for me today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I shall see you in the next one. Peace on the streets.